How to color and edit imported objects. Hello everyone. This is the third video I'm showing here with this Benchy. This was an STL file that I imported um, from Tinkiverse. In the first two videos I've shown how I've simplified this. You can see how nice this looks. It has only 13,000 faces. In this video I want to focus on how to color them. Um, if you have watched the previous videos, you would already know the basic selection, so it should be easy how to select and color parts, but there's still a few additional things that I can show. So I'll get started with the very basics. This is similar to what I've done before, but obviously in this case, you will have to make sure how to select so you don't have the gaps. Um, basically, the way it works is if you click on something that is already selected, it becomes deselected. So what we have to do here is we have to make sure to click at a place that we can get everything without uh, leaving any gaps and still selecting everything. And what I'm going to do here is you can see here I have a gap left over, so I'm going to click and I've deselected as you can see. Okay, so this I'm going to paint uh, just adding coloring and selecting different sections um, that we can do. And again, this is something similar to what we have done in the previous video, but I'm just um, right away gonna start showing you something new that we have not seen before. Um, so I think we can do a little bit more coloring, maybe uh, color these parts as well. And I can increase the tolerance a little bit more to make it easier to select and tie, I think. Um, and you can see it depends where we select it from so and what the tolerance is. So we don't want to select something extra. And here you go. So I think this basically is here. OK, so now we are dealing over here is I'm dealing with basic selection and this is quite easy. Now I'm going to show you how you can deselect sometimes why it's needed. So I've shown before that if you click and then you click again, it's deselecting. But sometimes it's not that simple. So let me show you the example over here. So I'm selecting this entire thing at once because the resolution is quite high. I can select it. The problem here is that I'm also selecting parts over here from these two circular parts and I don't want to select them. Now it's very difficult to select without them because these are quite flat to these to these things. So basically what I'll need to do, I can deselect and then select over here. Even with the lower tolerance, it will still select everything. If I'm going to make it, let's say, tolerance one, you see I still have the issue. And without a tolerance, I will have to select piecemeal selecting. So. I basically have no choice, I have to use this tolerance, and now I have deselected. So how do I deselect them? And it's quite simple, you can start picking faces individually deselect, but the easier way is to hold the control key down and while you click over here. So if I click again, it will deselect other stuff as well. If I hold the, um, the control key, I mean, if I click, if not everything was selected, it will select, but if I have the control key, down it will always be deselection so now i don't have to control key down it still worked because i clicked on something that is selected but in many cases um, you will need to have the control key down to do it so actually it's not that important over here i can do it without it uh, but just to show you that so in some cases for example if i'm going to select let's say here and now i want to deselect pieces so i can hold down my control key and then marquee select and it it deselects instead of selecting once I hold down the control key. So yeah, that's basically a small thing. The other thing I want to show over here is um, something that I've already shown in the previous video where you can kind of use the cube selection um, to cut pieces. So in this case, I will use it to color something. So if I'm moving this up, let's say for example over here, and now let's move this down a little bit here, something like this. And now if I have exact selection on, it will be a nice cut. Everything, it will cut exactly. Otherwise, it will just select the faces that is entirely inside. And in this case, there isn't a lot in it. So I have to make exact selection on. And then I can use this to color this. So whatever, we can kind of color this section as well and so on. Okay, now it becomes the interesting part that I want to show that we have something similar to a lasso selection. Um, if you're coming from graphic design software, um, you're probably used to using lasso selection. And in 3D modeling software, this is not so easy. Um, very few have that, especially not on such a complex shape. It will be very difficult to select. So, so I want to show you how you can actually do something similar. It's not exactly lasso selection, but you can do almost the same thing. So 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to 3D Sketch and I want to show you first the problem that I have over here. So if I'm going to select a draw something, let's say a spline even. If I'm drawing a spline from here, let's say making lines, at some point you see the spline starts going inside into the mesh because when we draw, we either draw on a plane or on an object. It depends how you make the uh, precision settings you can choose on what to intersect. Um, but normally you can draw on anything. Um, and then if you draw over here in this plane, then you skip over here, it's still going to the same plane. And because here is uh, popping out a little bit more than here, it kind of covers the profile. And this makes it very difficult to work with something unless you kind of keep on drawing very tiny places, you keep on clicking every small place. And this is very difficult. So what Selgit here has is an option that is you know, objects. If you click objects, um, you see it wouldn't allow you while spline because this is not available for splines. So if I go to line, if I go to objects, you see circles available, rectangles available, spline is not available, arcs are also available. Um, I think except spline, uh, everything is available. Um, what this is doing is it allows me to draw on something and will automatically project onto the surface. So if I'm trying to um, replicate a little bit the design that, I, that you see on top, it's obviously not perfect, not the same, but look how nicely this follows the object. And I can make it also like um, automatically have them project wherever I go. In some cases, this will be a better or less, depending how many details you add. But still, the object is being uh, drawn basically almost entirely the same thing. And now I can just click over here and this kind of wraps the entire thing. Okay, so now I, I didn't follow exactly and I made here some extra some mistakes. So I'll have to clean up these pieces, uh, but I'm actually purposely not going to clean this up and just to show you something. So now once I'm done with this, I'm going to use um, a small circle. So I'm drawing just a small circle and when I, I can actually make it smaller, but yeah, that's okay for now. Actually, let's make it smaller a little bit. So I'm going to scale um, up. I selected the circle to be in the same profile. I didn't want that. So I'm going to split it off. Okay, now I'm going to scale this circle down a little bit. And let's make it to, let's say, just five. Okay, so it's down to five. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to follow this. I select this, and then I select, secondly, the target, what I want to follow. And I'm going to use follow path tool. Um, and then I use extrusion option. So look what's happening over here. It follows this entire thing, okay? But because I had this broken object, there is actually here some issues. If I'm going to do, first of all, you see here we have two objects. This is the second object because I had here an issue. Uh, it created a new object for this extra small loose piece. So I can go and delete this object actually. I don't think it's needed, but I'm actually going to group them together, just combine them. And if I'm going to do now a Boolean this and this object it will fail because this object is not manifold because they have some self intersections over here, some problems. So what I'm going to do here is introduce a tool that I haven't shown a lot, which is the magic fix. Um, I plan to make soon a separate uh, video explaining the magic fix, but for now I'm just going to use it. And this is going to rebuild the object completely. So now I have this as a single, um, please it's still named group, but it's actually no longer a group. You saw that message that popped up that basically it's going to combine everything in the group, make it into one. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this a color. It doesn't matter which color I give it. And I'm going to select this object as well. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract this part from this one. And now we have a cut into the object, something like this. So now what will happen here is that I can go and I can select these pieces I can increase let's say make I think deep selection will work better here yes so I can kind of well, increase it over here I can kind of select this entire thing and color these things whatever give it some color and then I can do the same thing the top one I have to decrease the tolerance or make deep selection I think is working better here also so yeah deep selection selected the entire thing at once and Let's give it another color, something like this. Okay, it's not nothing major. Okay, so basically this idea how you can kind of start making different designs. Um, in this case, the last selection 
this kind actually created a cut over here, the inside. Um, I can change that to make it without make a cut. It's not as simple. I think I'll show that on a different object, how that could be done. Um, for now, let me just show you another thing that if you go to material selection, you can select any material individually and even let's say this entire thing over here and I can now color it, let's say, same color so it will barely be visible, the cut. Um, if I isolate this, hide away the black line, you can see now it's something like this. So you can select any piece with the material. If I click here, this material, it selects everything with the same material and you can start changing the color. As you can see, they all are different materials. Uh, the materials are being selected per material. That's basically it for now. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you need me to show anything else or if you have any questions. Uh, thank you. Till next time. Bye.